In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a double layered chocolate cake using Adobe Illustrator. You can see an example of the finished product there on your screen right now. Alrighty, so let's get started on this one today by jumping into Illustrator, making a new file and ensuring it's a thousand by a thousand pixels. That's width and height. RGB color mode, your raster effects, which is your resolution, should be 72 pixels per inch, suitable for the screen. Then you can click on create. Now when you click create, you'll get a white canvas ready for you to start drawing on. And the first thing I want you to do is grab your rectangle tool from your toolbox on the left hand side. Head up the top um, and click and drag down to the bottom right corner. Now we're going to turn the stroke off our shape here. So the stroke here, you can choose no color. So that's the box with the red line going through it. And for the fill color, we're going to choose a turquoise kind of color. So um, I'm just going to go into the properties and choose something like that. All right, so once you've got your background color in, go to your Layers panel. Maybe you can go to the Window menu and select Layers. Um, open up layer number one and just lock this rectangle into place. So that background's now um, locked in position. We can't move it or edit it. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is start drawing the plate that the cake will be sitting on. And again, we're going to use the rectangle tool for this. Uh, just change the color of that rectangle though. We don't want it to blend in with the background. I'm going to choose like a mustardy kind of color so get down between the yellows and the oranges there and don't make it too bright oh, just something like that should do the job I think and draw yourself a skinny little plate that runs along the bottom of the page something like that now grab your black arrow there which is your selection tool and zoom in on one of the corners and you'll see these little um, circles that appear as long as you've got the shape selected still okay so I'm gonna grab one of those little circles and pull it in and that will just round off the plate uh, I'm not gonna pull it all the way in till it goes red that's probably a bit too rounded so something like um, that will look all right And if you zoom back out you've now got a plate there with rounded corners so just stick it somewhere in the middle um, of the page down the bottom and that should do us for the plate so the next thing I'm gonna do is draw the chocolate cake itself so grab your rectangle tool again um, actually you've clicked off this plate so we don't want it selected and we're going to change the fill color of our chocolate cake to a dark brown now I'm going to start by connecting it to the plate I'm not going to be the same width as the plate though I'll go a little bit smaller and I'm going to draw out something probably like that that's going to be the bottom layer of the cake now on this bottom layer we're going to add a couple of um, layers of cream so again click off this shape you can hold control to quickly get to the selection um, tool and just click off that shape and with your rectangle tool we're going to change the fill color to a light brown which will be the creamy icing kind of color and just draw for me two lines that go across the bottom there you might just want to draw one and then with your selection tool click on it and control c to copy control v to paste that way you get two lines exactly the same size and just run a couple of layers of cream there, I'd say, through the bottom of the cake. Okay, I know that looks a bit funny now, but once it's all done up, it'll start to look better. All right, so the next thing you want to do with this cake is add some icing. So we're going to grab our line tool for this. Uh, so it's the line segment tool. It's hiding underneath the rectangle there. So hold your left mouse button down on that rectangle tool until you see the line segment tool. And for this line, just change your appearance uh, in the properties here. Change the appearance to have no fill color and a stroke of about size 10. Okay, now the stroke color should be that same color you used for the cream down there. So a nice light brown. And I'm going to hold shift and just draw a line that is the same width as the cake. All right, something like that. Now, if you look at the end of these lines, see how they're a square end to these lines. We're actually going to, while it's still selected, click on the stroke option over here on the right and change it to a round cap. Okay, just rounds off the end of the line. All right, that's an easy one. So we've got the line there now, and what we're going to do is put a zigzag effect on top of this line to make some icing. So click on that line, and I want you to... Head up to the Effect menu, go down to Distort and Transform, and choose Zigzag. Okay, now when the settings box appears, first thing I want you to do is I want you to make the options here um, to Relative and 5%. Okay, so we've got 5% Relative in the top section. The ridges per segment, we're going to up that to about 10 ridges per segment. And instead of having um, pointed corners, on these lines we're going to have smooth corners so it makes a kind of wavy effect and you can see there that's what it's going to look like 
Click OK once you've got the same as me. 5% relative, 10 ridges per segment, and smooth for the points. Click OK. Now you can move that down um, onto your cake if you would like. You can start to see where we're going to have like the drippy kind of icing coming down the cake. OK, now to edit this line and make it actually turn into icing, we need to go to the object menu up the top and expand its appearance. OK, and from your toolbox, we're going to go to the third tool down, which is the pen tool. And I'm going to simply click on the corner of this shape here and then click up above the cake a little bit and drag my mouse. And it's going to make a bit of a curve kind of shape. Don't want to make it too big, something like that, which is going to be the top of the cake. I'm going to hold shift and just go straight across. And that'll draw me a straight line straight across the top of the cake. And then I'm going to come around, probably just connect straight up to that anchor. It's going to look a bit funny, but I'm going to click and drag out. And yeah, it does look very funny, but we're going to fix that in just a moment. Okay, so that's going to be the icing for our cake. If you grab your uh, white arrow here, which is the direct selection tool, we're going to be able to modify it a little bit. Before I do that, I might just switch the um, stroke and fill colors around here so it fills in with that creamy kind of color we chose before. And with your white arrow, you can actually go around all these little points you see and click on them, and you can smooth them off by dragging that in. And you can also pick up these points once you click on them and move them around to make them look a bit better. Okay, you can also grab the handles and play around with them as well to see if that adjusts how each of these um, parts of the cake look. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time perfecting my icing. Okay, but something like that um, looks pretty good. I want to smooth off that corner a bit. Now, what I'm going to do next is start pulling um, some of these bits up and some of these bits down. So if you click on one of these points, you should be able to move it up. Click on this point. You can move it down. You can move it to the side a little bit. It's just going to make it look like it's um, drippy kind of icing, but a little bit random in where it's dripping and what direction it's going and things like that. But that's not looking too bad. Um, I'll just pull it down a little bit, not too far, maybe out there. Bring it down. Okay, and that's the bottom of our cake. I think that looks pretty good. All right, we're going to repeat that for the top section. Okay, so if you want, you can probably just copy and paste this um, brown rectangle. So Control c to copy, Control v to paste. Stick it up the top and resize it. Make it a bit smaller. The top tier of the cake should only be oh, I don't know, about that size there I reckon that looks pretty good and yeah, make sure that connects to your uh, icing there what we might do is just go to our layers and put this behind the icing okay so that looks a bit better okay now we want to do the same thing for the icing along this top one okay so we're going to grab our line segment tool again um, again you'll have to Change your properties here to have no fill and a size 10 stroke with that light brown color, which will probably come up automatically. And I'm just going to hold shift and click straight across the same width as that top section. So I'll get that line like that. Click on the word stroke and make sure you round off the cap there. So you've got a round cap. And the next thing I'm going to do is just go up to the effect menu. And we don't have to go through the whole zigzag option again. We can just click apply zigzag and it remembers your settings from the zigzag effect you put on before. So there we go, that's looking good. Um, now with this selected, go to Object and expand the appearance to allow us to edit it. I'm just going to move it down onto the cake here to start with. And I'm going to grab my pen tool one more time. And I'm just going to start clicking on these endpoints. I'm going to click once on this anchor and come up. Just above the cake somewhere, click again and drag to get that round kind of effect. I'm going to hold Shift and come straight across the other side. Click again and go down to this last anchor point. Click and drag to get that round corner. Okay, head down the bottom to where you've got your fill and stroke colors and switch them over. Grab your white arrow and just start adjusting those little points again where needed just to smooth them out. Um, if they look a bit funny, by all means adjust the shape there so it doesn't look as funny. And make sure you click once on these points and start pulling a few down, pushing a few up. Moving some slightly to the side. And then you should have a fairly decent looking cake. I think. Let's pull that one out there. And this corner here is a little bit sharp. So I'll make that a bit smaller. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. Okay, if you want to adjust yours a bit more, spend a bit more time on it, make it look good. But that's all I'm going to show you in um, this video for the icing. Now we're going to put some sprinkles on the icing. This can be a bit of a time-consuming job, so I'll show you how to do a few of them, and then we're just going to fast-forward the video so you don't have to sit and watch me do them individually. I'm sure there's a quicker way, but I'm going to use the ellipse tool for this. And with the ellipse tool, I'm just going to draw a little oval shape, um, something like that. Fill color for that is going to be a bright pink. And that's my first little sprinkle is going on the cake. Now it's a copy and paste job here to get these looking good. Now, if we have them all the same way, um, not going to look real flush, I don't think. So what you'll need to do is zoom in on each of these, click on them with your black arrow, and give each of them a little bit of a rotate. So they're rotating in different directions, each one of them. Uh, whoops. And we can hold space bar to get that hand up and that will allow you to move around the screen a bit easier. And just when you're doing these sprinkles, make sure you're zoomed in when you're rotating these. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the rotate option. Okay, but we're just going to scatter a few like that. If you want, you can click on them and hold shift to select them all. And we might be able to copy and paste them down to the bottom one as well. Save us a little bit of time. Okay. Now your job is just to simply go around and do that uh, multiple times and use different colors as well. So I'm going to use some bright colors like greens, aqua, yellow, and that'll really make it look like a fun cake. So I'm going to fast forward the video now. You can watch along very quickly um, how I do it, and then you can have a crack at doing it on yours. Okay, so get ready for the video to speed up now. All right, folks, hopefully you got through that all right, but that's um, all the sprinkles there put onto my cake. So I reckon that's looking um, pretty good, I would say. A little bit lopsided there. I'll just move that pink one back. That's good. Okay, last thing we want to do um, to this cake is just stick a candle on it. So let's draw ourselves a pink rectangle, I think, to start with. So grab your rectangle tool. My color's already pink, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And draw yourself a little candle. Uh, it's just going to sit on top of the cake there. So I reckon that's probably a good size to start with. Now once you've got the pink rectangle there, we're going to grab... Um, well, we're going to click off this first of all. So I'm going to hold control and just click off that rectangle so it's not selected. And I'm going to change my rectangle color to white now. We're going to draw some little white rectangles. Okay, now it's just going to go up near the top here. And it's just going to be something as simple as that on the candle. Oops. Make sure it's exact width of that candle and it's got to be a rectangle not a square so something along those lines and what we're going to do is make like a um, barber pole kind of effect here so it looks like the colors are wrapping around the candle in a bit of a diagonal um, angle so i'm going to click on this shape and with my white um, direct selection tool i'm going to choose the top left corner and the bottom left corner okay and then i can just grab one of them and pull them down a bit of a slope there, so I might come down, oh, what do you reckon, 15 pixels, so you can see it's gone down the y-axis, 15 pixels, and we're just going to use our selection tool here again, the black arrow to hold alt, and just duplicate that and bring it up, um, now, the gap between each of them are roughly the same size as what the white thing is, so, zoom back a bit here, I'm going to keep duplicating all the way down the page. You could do this properly, but I'm just going to do it by sight and hope that I get it pretty close to right, otherwise it'll look a little bit funny. Okay, don't mind that this one's gone outside of the lines of the candle too. We're going to do it again at the bottom as well, and then we're going to delete those extra pieces we don't need. Okay, looking pretty good so far. A couple more. And we'll stick one down the bottom there. Uh, something like that will probably work. Okay, so you can see that barber pole effect coming into play here. Now what I'm going to do is press um, Control A. That just selects everything on the page. Grab my Shape Builder tool, which is the circle, or two circles here, and a little arrow. I'm just going to click and drag over that bit outside 
of my candle and I'll do the same down the bottom too click and drag over that bit outside the candle grab your black arrow selection tool you can click on those little extra whoops extra pieces make sure you click off your candle first then click on those extra pieces and press delete and that should get rid of them all right that's looking pretty good um, now if you want you could probably highlight all of this and group it together Control G and I wonder if we'll be able to mm, no it's going to round off the edges but I left that a bit too late so we'll just have a square candle for now now on top of this candle we need to put a little wick so using your rectangle tool again change the color to black and draw a little wick that comes out of the center I love the candle like so I'm just going to nudge that up could be a little bit thick so I might just make that a little bit smaller maybe even a little bit shorter okay now with that wick there what we're going to do next is put a little flame coming out of the top of it okay now to do the flames probably different ways you could do it but I'm just going to use the ellipse tool now make sure you clicked off everything and change your fill color to a orangey yellowy kind of color probably something like that one draw yourself an oval kind of shape using your white arrow now you should be able to just deform that click on one of the corners and just you can pull it in and out um, and what we're going to do is try and get a flame kind of shape so you might be able to pull that top bit up a bit pull these bits out a bit it doesn't matter if it's huge at the moment we'll resize it shortly you can play with the handles a bit as well if you want to see if they do anything you might be able to click on those little handles and pull them around to kind of get a, a flame shape I might even um, twist that a little bit to the right so it looks like the wind's blowing it a little bit but that's all you really need a shape that's similar to that okay now once you've done that you can pick it up with your black arrow and move it over to the candle I might even go to my layers here and put that behind the wick so I'm going to drag that layer down behind the wick all right now that's the outer part of the flame what I might do here I don't know if this will work but if we click on this orange bit and go to object um, path and offset the path um, what will happen if we make it about minus 10 pixels and click OK can't really see it at the moment we've got a little flame there inside so we made it 10 pixels there smaller than the bigger one and we're going to change the color of that inner piece um, oops there we go to a oh, like a yellowy kind of color now that's a bright yellow what I might do is just drop the opacity here let's try 50% opacity yeah not bad maybe 50 or 60 percent opacity which is just the transparency of the shape will look good and I'm going to bring that down towards the bottom and that kind of looks like a flame I think from a distance you'll never know oh, that looks pretty good now it's a little bit big so I'll just select those two bits and resize them a bit so they're a better size I reckon that looks like a good looking candle so I'm going to select all of that candle and the flame Control G to group it and just move it down overlap the cake because what we're going to do is play with the layers and actually put that behind the cake um, now to do that that's going to be a bit of a mongrel because we've got a lot of sprinkles there so you're just going to have to drag it down your layers panel there oops and just keep scrolling down until you find that cake which is down here that will go behind it okay so it looks like the little candle is now sitting on top of the cake so if we zoom back there now that cake is pretty much done so I'm just going to highlight all that maybe make it a touch bigger so it fills the page move it up a bit towards the center happy days we have got our birthday cake um, or chocolate cake there done and dusted